It's believed to be one of the biggest meth raids ever in eastern Kentucky. We'll show you where deputies say a man hid hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of meth. It has been an active season for flooding so far this summer in Kentucky. Coming up, we'll take you out to Rowan County, where some people are still picking up the pieces. And how this woman's father-in-law was lured into a lottery scam that cost him $50,000. That story coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good afternoon. Deputies say it is one of the largest meth busts ever in the state of Kentucky. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says they found more than $700,000 worth of meth. Most of it was hidden at a farm in the Bronston community. Deputies arrested James Ronald Muse during the investigation. Our Monique Blair is live at the desk in the newsroom. She's been going through the court documents and has the latest on the case in our top story at 530. Monique. Sam Amber Pulaski County Sheriff Greg Speck says this is believed to be the largest seizure of crystal methamphetamine ever in the Eastern District of Kentucky. 68 year old James Ronald Muse, also known as Big R, was arrested on Wednesday after a lengthy investigation by the DEA along with several other agencies who participated in the dual county investigation. On Monday, agents used a confidential source to buy one pound of methamphetamine from Muse for $22,000. Once that deal was made, a search warrant was then executed on Muse's home in Wayne County. Agents seized one pound of meth and $42,000 in cash from Muse's home. But the investigation wasn't over there. The investigation also led agents to the Bronston community in Pulaski County. Agents found 11 more pounds of crystal meth with a total street value of approximately $700,000 hidden in a load of corn inside a building on a farm. Although Muse does not own that building, he did admit to agents to using the building to distribute meth. Now, after Muse was arrested, he did admit to selling about seven or eight pounds of meth over the past year and a half. Right now, he's currently booked in the Laurel County Detention Center. At the live desk, Monique Blair, WKYT. And authorities anticipate even more federal indictments as this investigation continues. They say they never thought it would happen to them, but families in Rowan County are still cleaning up tonight after a creek that runs near their property flooded their homes and yards. Now the Red Cross is lending a hand to help those families clean up the mess. New at 530, our Mike Linden shows us how the organization is helping. I don't want to go through it again. It makes me want to pack up and leave. For Aki and Mike Cooper, Dry Creek behind their home in Moorhead has been anything but. It just all happened so fast, but then all night long it just kept rising and more rock and more water. The Coopers have lived next to Dry Creek for nearly 15 years, and they say they've never seen it come up and out of its banks ever before. But that's exactly what happened last Saturday night with enough water to cover their backyard with nearly two feet of rushing water. We went through that twice. For the Coopers and many others in Rowan County, the Red Cross is providing toiletries and cleaning supplies to those affected by the flooding over the past two weeks at the Carl D. Perkins Community Center. It makes a difference. And uh, they were actually calling me while the flood was actually in progress on Monday night, saying, what do you need? What can we do to help? Thanks, young man. The Relief Center will be open this Saturday, and then volunteers will provide assistance on an as-needed basis. For some people, like the Coopers, there's a long road ahead to get back to normal. I never would have thought it would happen here. If it would, I wouldn't be living here. But it's just an act of nature, and we have to learn to deal with it and trying to get help if we can to get the situation cleaned up. In Rowan County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Well, emergency management tells us that the paperwork to declare parts of the county a disaster area have already been sent to FEMA. We're finally seeing some normal summer weather in the forecast for the final weekend of July, but I hesitate to say normal because it's really kind of cool out there for this time of year. We never know? really know what normal is, do we? Yeah. We're tracking some sunny skies and warmer temperatures. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look now at our weekend forecast. Yeah, normal's overrated anyway, guys. This afternoon, as uh, Sam was kind of mentioning, we are below normal yet again, 18th day for the month of July, where our temperatures uh, stay normal or below here in Lexington. 84 right now, Lexington, Frankfurt into Richmond, 83, Corbin, 
All four locations, though, with a mostly sunny sky that is out there. Most thermometers into the low 80s, a couple of mid 80s showing up into parts of central, northern, and western sections of the area. But overall, it is looking mighty fine on your Friday evening throughout the entire region, especially when we look at Defender and we just click the button and move on by it because it has nothing for us to show. Weather headlines as we rolled our way into the weekend. I've got typical summer temperatures. Normal this time of year, upper 80s. That's about where we should be over the next couple of days. Smallest threat for a little pop-up shower or thunderstorm, though, as we go into next week, a couple of cold fronts begin to show up on the scene. That's going to mean some changes that show up in that seven-day forecast. Guys, when I come back in a few minutes, we'll take you through that weekend and then show you what those changes will bring to central and eastern Kentucky. Some new information tonight about a teenage mother charged with the murder of her newborn. Louisville police say they got a call on Wednesday telling them a 15-year-old gave birth at Jewish Hospital and then killed her baby. Officers say the 15-year-old admitted to smothering her baby and then hiding the baby's body in her purse. The teenager has been released from the hospital. It's now booked into the Jefferson County Youth Detention Center. She is charged with murder, tampering with evidence, and abuse of a corpse. In eastern Kentucky, a man is sentenced to two years in jail. Last month, a jury found Delbert White guilty of reckless homicide. He was convicted of hitting and killing 13-year-old Taylor Hinson in July of 2013. His sentence goes along with the sentence that the jury recommended last month. State police are investigating what led up to a deadly farming accident. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Nicholas County. Troopers say 49-year-old Sean Peterman was out baling hay by himself last night, and when he didn't come home at midnight, his wife called for help. Peterman's body was found in a tractor along Stony Creek Road in Carlisle. Troopers say it looks like Peterman got off the tractor but didn't turn it off, and then somehow got caught up in the machine. Peterman died at the scene. In Marshall County, fire investigators say an overpressurized still led to a deadly explosion at a distillery in April. The state fire marshal's office says the still at Silver Trail Distillery was not designed to hold pressure and it was not equipped with a correct pressure relief valve. Investigators believe the explosion caused the still's contents to reach high temperatures. That resulted in burn injuries to two distillery workers. One of those men later died. In Madison County, police are looking for a couple accused of stealing more than a thousand dollars worth of merchandise from a grocery store. Richmond police say a woman and a man pushed a cart full of merchandise right out of Kroger on Wednesday. Police posted these surveillance photos today. The woman walked out of the store and the man followed her with a cart. The man was wearing a pink shirt and a black hat, and the woman was wearing a tank top, jean shorts, and a black and had a black and white purse. They manipulate their victims, harass them, and don't give up until they have stolen every dollar possible. Here's the story of a scam that is draining the life savings of tens of thousands of elderly victims across this country. It became a real obsession. She is talking about her father-in-law, a retired minister who found himself on the losing end of a lottery sweepstakes scam. She is remaining anonymous out of respect for her father-in-law's privacy. But she wants other families to know how these con artists stole money from a man she considers intelligent and thoughtful. They played on his religious beliefs. They quoted him scripture, just really got into his heart and his head by doing so. Her father-in-law believed he had won a $2 million sweepstakes and a new car. He was told all he needed to do was send in the taxes and fees for the jackpot. So he did, over and over again. It had gotten so bad that he even was calling the local taxis to come and pick up the checks to take them to a uh, given address where the people had told him. In fact, the scammers were calling 10 to 20 times a day. We feel that a lot of it was out of loneliness because he does not have family members near him. When his family caught on, they changed his number, but that didn't stop the scam artists. They have mailed cell phones um, with loaded minutes, even after we have had phones disconnected. Over three years, he lost $50,000, never receiving a penny of the winnings that didn't exist. You feel helpless, number one. It has destroyed a lot of family unity. But there is never a payoff. Some important advice for every consumer. A legitimate lottery will take out taxes and fees and anything else that's required prior to turning the money over to you. There's no reason for you to pay taxes and fees on winnings that you don't even have yet. 
Now, we have reported on the scam many, many times, but it keeps happening. In this case, postal inspectors have tracked the scam back to Jamaica, where many lottery sweepstakes scams begin. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Some business and civic leaders in Lexington plan to press the state legislature to allow local governments to decide if they want a local income tax. And Senate Republican leaders will use a key highway bill to start another battle over the president's health care law. Bill Bryant explains in the bottom line. Good evening. Some business and civic leaders are ready to press the state legislature again to allow voters to decide if local governments should be allowed to have a local income tax if the voters say yes. Bob Quick of Commerce Lexington says it may be unusual for a business group to press for a tax option, but he says it would make a big difference for Kentucky communities. People might say, well, it's unusual for a business group to support uh, a tax uh, of any kind. We are a community that's growing, changing, and, there, and to be competitive globally. We can't talk just be competitive nationally, but globally. There are a piece of our infrastructure we need. We keep going to Frankfurt trying to request that, that money for those infrastructure pieces, and we're competing with all other you know, uh, aspects of the state for, for money. This is a local control issue. This is where we can take 1% sales tax. This is where we can, as a voters, we can agree to how we enhance this community to improve the quality of life and the economics of it. Quick says there will be a strong effort in the coming legislative session to get lawmakers to pass a constitutional amendment that would appear on the November 2016 ballot. Quick is one of our guests on Kentucky Newsmakers this weekend, and the full program runs Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT. It repeats Sunday at 10 a.m. on the CW Lexington. Set your DVR or catch it then. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul continuing to work hard in the nation's first presidential primary state of New Hampshire. He's pushing what he calls a fair and flat tax, and he's doing that at stops across New Hampshire scheduled for this weekend. Paul is working to stand out in the historically crowded Republican primary field. Senate Republican leaders will be using a key highway bill to try to start another battle over the president's health care law. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky planning to introduce an amendment to the transportation bill that would fully repeal Obamacare. That would set up a very closely watched vote Sunday, and there's talk of a criminal probe of Hillary Clinton's emails while she was Secretary of State. CBS will have more on that later. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Sounds like a lot of fun, a night full of food and dancing all to help a good cause. The Woodford Humane Society's Freedom Fest is set for tomorrow at the future home of the Triple Crown winner, American Pharaoh. Tickets are still available for the event. Besides dinner and dancing, there will be silent and live auctions, and the money goes to help the animals at the Humane Society. From maintenance of the shelter to uh, feeding the animals, providing medications and veterinary care, exercise, toys, beds, blankets, um, anything it takes. Uh, we have 200 to 300 animals on site on any given day. Um, so anything that goes into keeping them happy and healthy. Freedom Fest is at Ashford Stud tomorrow afternoon starting at 530. There will be tickets available at the gate.